The Vivitro Labs High Cycle is an accelerated wear tester intended for use with cardiovascular devices. The High Cycle has six sample chambers which subject test devices to accelerated pulsatile loading conditions by moving them through a blood analog fluid. When air infiltrates the sample chamber, bubbles can cloud the visibility of your sample, change the system compliance, and cause noise and pressure readings. This video will address how air gets into the high cycle chambers, how to prevent this through regular equipment maintenance, and how to remove air bubbles when they do form. Air bubbles can enter the system at any seal or interface between the test fluid and atmosphere. You may have a static head feeding fluid into the system. If this runs dry, air will get sucked in. Attaching syringes to remove air bubbles from pressure transducers can introduce more bubbles. Accidentally opening a stopcock to air while the high cycle is running will allow air to get sucked into the chamber. When first filling the high cycle with fluid, small air pockets can get trapped in the chambers and release on startup. If chamber windows are not sealing properly, air can get in. Examples leading to a bad window seal would be a worn o-ring, salt crusted on the seal, or improperly tightened window fasteners. Drain ports can come loose and allow the entrance of air. The scan valve may be leaking, allowing air to get in. The static head may not be high enough. When the bellows start to wear, air can penetrate small cracks in the silicone. Fortunately, air infiltration can be minimized by regular equipment maintenance and proper setup. Check for salt buildup around ceiling edges, like chamber windows, drain ports, and the scan valve. If there is salt built up, it means fluid is getting out. If fluid can get out, air can get in. Change window o-rings as needed. If you notice fluid leaking around the window, edges, or salt buildup, change the o-ring. When you are putting a window back on, wipe any salt and fluid from the edges of the window and o-ring, as well as the window sealing surface. Check that all of the drain ports and stopcocks are tightened daily. If these come loose, they can allow air into the system. If there is a salt buildup around the scan valve seal or fluid leaking out, the scan valve tension may likely need to be adjusted to improve the seal. Attaching a static head to the system helps to feed fluid into the chambers if any fluid is leaking. The fluid levels in the static head should be monitored and topped up daily. If there is a substantial leak or the static head fluid level is not topped up regularly, the static head can run dry and feed air into the system. Maintaining the static head as high as possible helps keep bubbles out of the system. Use syringes with flexible tips so you can encourage extracted air bubbles to the back of the syringe instead of accidentally introducing air bubbles. When first filling the high cycle chambers with test fluid and fixing devices to the pistons, air can get trapped in small pockets. It is important to run the high cycle at low amplitude before tuning the system to dislodge any trapped air bubbles before testing begins. The high cycle bellows experience stress over time and will fail if they are not regularly changed. It is recommended that the bellows are changed every 50 million cycles to prevent bellows failure during high cycle operation. When the bellows start to fail, they get tiny cracks and holes that may allow some fluid to leak out and let air get sucked into the chambers. Usually air bubbles, due to bellow failure, are very fine bubbles that make the fluid appear clouded. When bubbles do accumulate in the high cycle chambers, there are a number of ways to extract them. When it comes to larger bubbles, you can sometimes just suck them out with a syringe while the high cycle is running. If not, put the high cycle in standby. 
When the high cycle is in standby, larger bubbles tend to accumulate near the top drain port. This air can be sucked out with a syringe or just bled out using the pressure of the static head. Keep in mind that air sometimes accumulates in the bellows and releases when the high cycle is stopped then started again. If this is the case, the high cycle can be stopped and started a couple times to release the trapped air, which can then be extracted. It is a good idea to do this before stopping the high cycle to extract air, as more bubbles may be released when the high cycle starts again. With any of these extraction techniques, always be careful not to let the static head run dry. Smaller bubbles which cloud the test fluid can be harder to extract than large bubbles. They get caught on the chamber windows instead of accumulating at the drain port. These can be squeegeed off the window. There are multiple ways to do this, but essentially you create a bigger air bubble at the top of the chamber, then refill with fluid to remove small bubbles. There are three techniques we recommend trying. With the static head open, you can use a syringe to inject air at the top drain port until only air is in contact with the window. Then, either suck the fluid back with a syringe or detach the syringe to let the static head fill the chamber. With this method, be careful the static head isn't too full or injecting air will cause an overflow. You also don't want the static head to run dry either. With the static head closed, open the top drain port, then the bottom drain port to drain enough fluid so that only air is in contact with the window. Then close the bottom drain port and open the static head again to allow the fluid to refill the chamber. You will need to add fluid to the static head as the level drops to fill the chamber. With the static head closed, attach a syringe with a little bit of fluid in it to the bottom drain port and open the top drain port. Extract fluid with the syringe and allow the top of the chamber to fill with air until only air is touching the window. Re-inject the fluid in the bottom drain port until all the air is pushed out the top drain port, being careful not to re-inject air. Close both drain ports and reopen the static head. If none of these methods seem to be working, please let us know and we'd be happy to troubleshoot the issue with you.